All right, I skipped ahead just a little bit here. Like I told you, I built the little back panels here out of the Garolite. Garolite is very easy to work. Uh, that is a brand name. Basically, it's fiberglass board. So Garolite is pretty easy to work. You, um, you basically just cut it and drill it like it's a thin piece of wood. Like water doesn't affect it. It doesn't get damaged uh, easily. It's, a, it's nice, strong stuff. So what I've done here is I've cut the Garolite, I drilled the Garolite, and then I riveted the Garolite here to the panel, and it is sterile. And uh, I've already cut the hole big enough for my quarter inch jack. So, I uh, let's see, there's a few other holes I gotta cut. I gotta find a good place to put the, um, the 10K bias adjustment pot. You know, maybe there's enough room right here. Yeah, there's enough room right here. I'll just put it right there. I'll go ahead and drill that hole. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and finish getting the rest of my parts together and then I'll show you the stack of parts I got and I'll show you the nice hole that I drilled. So I've drilled all my holes now. You can see I put this, uh, I went ahead and installed this. This is the uh, bias pot. You know, this is so you can set your bias point for the power tubes. And it's back here where you can actually see the power tubes. Oh, it's good to see them too, because if you can see them red plating, then they're definitely biased incorrectly. You use a screwdriver to adjust the bias here, and then you put your probes right here, because uh, this is the ground, and then this is the negative voltage. And then I uh, enlarge this hole. Man, enlarging holes is fun. That's for the uh, the larger cap can, and then I had to put two holes here for its mounting bracket. I added another hole here, which is close enough for these trimmed off AC secondary leads. These, these are for the, uh, the high voltage. So those will have a, a tag strip that's close enough. Uh, originally, it probably went over here. Somebody at some point had replaced the, um, the diodes because what they had done was they had just clipped out the old ones and then just literally stuck the new ones on and used the solder like glue. There was no mechanical connection at all. And for some reason, at the same time, they must have sh accidentally shortened these and then realized they needed to be longer. That's why they lengthened them back out, but then didn't, didn't put any protection on them. There was no shrink tubing or even electrical tape or wire nuts or anything. Just a dollop of solder glue and uh, open bare wire, which could have caused a massive problem. They just got lucky that it didn't. There'll be a tag strip here. There'll be a, a cap can here. It's a 100 microfarad times two at 500 volts. I will be installing that. Uh, the next step is gonna be me installing all the stuff I've cut holes for. I, I went ahead and did this guy just because I wanted to jump ahead and get that in there. So I'll go ahead and install that, that, and the quarter inch jacks. Go ahead and put the, all those in there. And then I should have all the hardware on the board and then I can start soldering in parts. All right, I got all of the hardware mounted and this thing is ready to start building. I mean, you know, soldering. Uh, as far as building, I've already built the physical parts and you can see I cleaned the chassis up a bit, a little more uh, penetrating oil, and some scrubby pads, some plastic scrubby pads. You know, if you, if you scrub too hard, you'll wind up pulling some of the plating off of here. And I, I think the way these, these specific chassis were, you know, every everybody built their stuff differently. But I'm pretty sure this was steel and it's plated in nickel or something like that. That's why you can see where the some of the plating has come off. That's where it rusted. But like if it wasn't plated, this whole surface would have light rust on it at the very least. They use plating processes to keep these things from, from rusting. If you wind up using actual sandpaper or steel wool and you go too hard, you'll wind up pulling the plating off and then you're actually working backwards. You're gonna make it rust. I got my uh, cap can that is uh, mounted there. Uh, everything on the front's the same. These are all these are all removed, cleaned, and tightened back down. Around the back here, you'll see I've mounted my quarter inch jacks. And then over here, I've got two more quarter inch jacks. These are the two inputs, one for each of the two channels. It, it is a two channel amplifier, just like most old amps. Uh, so two channel amplifier, and then these two speaker connectors will be connected together so you could hook up one or two cabinets to the same thing. Uh, obviously, they, the, the load that we'd have to set for it would be the total load for both cabinets. 
And up here you can see I've done a little bit of modification to the labeling. I, I used my dental tool to scrape off some of the ink. And you know, this had instructions right here for the different pins on the weirdo connector. You can go back and look at the uh, old shot and see what that looks like. Uh, so I've removed that. I removed the reference to the remotes. That's used to say remote control. I removed the 25 volt because there's no longer a 25 volt tap. And I removed where it talked about 70 volt and class one wiring. I removed where it said mag over this third jack here. I removed where it said input two. I, I removed the number two selector so that it, it used to say mag or mic here. And uh, I, I will go back after I'm done building the whole thing when I go and do my, uh, my little paint decoration, my, my hot rod pinstriping and stuff. I will go back and replace all these labels with what I have changed them to. I have added this tag strip right here, close to it. I did put some lock washers down in there to hold it nice and tight, so. Well, y'all, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble all the other parts that are gonna go in here and I'll have a nice little pile there and I'll show them to you. And uh, but before I actually assemble it, I'll, I'll show you all the parts. All right, moving along. Here we are. I have all my parts pulled and laid out here. I will go ahead and run through them for you. Obviously there are some parts that are already in the chassis. The potentiometers are all being reused from the original stock design. I'll spray them down with a little fader lube. Same thing with the power switch. I'm um, reusing the, all the original sockets. They will be scrubbed clean and lubed up with some deoxit. Uh, I've got this balance pot here that'll be reused. All of the tag strips have been, uh, you know, cleaned and scraped and refurbed. I did add a tag, a tag strip here. This has been added mostly because the wiring here was cut short. This uh, dual 100 microfarad, 500 volt cap can was added. It replaced uh, another cap can that had actually had four sections. So because of that, I will have to replace the other two sections with individual caps. Um, I also have the quarter wrench jacks. Those were already been installed. And there were two resistors that I just left in there because there was no point in pulling those out. And I did add this uh, pot so that you could actually have an, an adjustable bias. Yeah, everything else is stock. Over here, we've got the filter caps. These 22 microfarad, 500 volt. 100 microfarad, 50 volt. The 100 microfarad is the bypass cap for the base channel. This is a 50 microfarad, 50 volt. That's for the circuit where I raised the center tap for the heater. Then I've got two of these 47 microfarad, 100 volts. Those are for the bias circuit. And then I've got uh, these 22 microfarad, 50 volts. So I've got two of those. Those are for the bypass caps on the guitar slash lead channel. And then I've got here, I've got my 1N4007, one amp, thousand volt diodes. And I've got five of them, four for the full wave bridge, and then one for the bias circuit. Over here, I've got four, even though there's three of one kind and one that's different, and I'll explain why. 4.22, 630 volt. These three are gonna be coupling caps. And then this fourth one is gonna be in the bias circuit. I use the higher quality Mallory 150 series for the coupling and this cheaper one. I, you know, I already had it in my collection. I've got some of these older, cheaper parts. Well, I, I definitely don't like to use them in an audio path, but for the bias circuit, it's gonna be fine. And then I've got the uh, 0.1 microfarad, 400 volt. This is a coupling cap that's right ahead of the tone stack. I've got a 0.02 coupling cap which is used in the very last stage that feeds the phase inverter. We've got a 0.01 microfarad that's gonna be in the guitar stage. This is the coupling cap from that first stage to the first pot. And then I've got a bunch of different caps here. This one's gonna be in the tone stack. This one's in the tone stack. I don't have a 500 picofarad, so I have two 250s that I'll wire in parallel with each other, which will add up to 500. That's in the tone stack. I've got a 330 picofarad, which is in the tone stack. And then I've got a 100 picofarad, which I will use to bypass the pot on the guitar circuit to give it a slightly brighter signal, especially when the volume's turned down. Then we've got the resistors here. And there's a lot of different opinions about, uh, you know, resistors in, in guitar amps, especially. And I've got two kinds here. And you'll notice none of them 
our carbon film. I have metal film on the left here. These are all different kinds of metal film resistors. And then on the right, I've got carbon composition resistors. So the metal films are the modern style, high accuracy, and then the uh, carbon composition are the vintage. They drift higher, but they're full of tone, they're noisy. What they do is, these are what I call the flavor. Like these actually add a lot to the circuits as far as, uh, you know, tone wise, that these don't. And you know, you can read about research done in the different types of caps in different positions. You know, I've, I've built a bunch of amps now and I, I can tell you from experience that there's places for these and there's places for these. And I've decided in certain parts of the circuits to use different ones in different ways. For an example, in the high voltage parts of the circuit, the resistors between the filter capacitors and the resistors for the plates, those are great to use these with because that's what's feeding you the voltage. When you're listening to the amp, you're listening to the voltage. So it's nice to have those. That's why a lot of these I've reused from the original Bogan amp. So I tested them and they, even if they were a little bit outside of spec, because they definitely tend to drift up they weren't wildly out of spec, and they're still uh, going to be useful in this circuit. Like I said, I like to reuse the old stuff to kind of try to keep some of the soul of the original amplifier. Another good place to use the carbon composition is actually in the audio path. If audio is going to run through it, I like to use them. Now, the metal films, they excel uh, where you want accuracy. One of the areas that I like to use these for sure is when I'm setting bias on a, on a cathode resistor. Like no audio is running through that, and you want high accuracy there. You know, you want to know what the bias point is. Anytime you're trying to balance something, for instance, uh, I have these 100K metal films. Those are gonna be the resistors that go from the bias voltage to each of the power tubes. And then I've also got grid stopper resistors that are gonna go from the end of these to the actual grid. I want those to be highly accurate. And these are both, I guess they're five percenters, but I actually picked out parts from my collection that were even closer than that. They're probably within 1% of each other. That way, both power tubes get the same bias voltage. That way you're not running one of these that might have drifted out of spec. See what I'm saying? So whenever you want accuracy, go with the metal films. If you want tone, go with these guys. And then, like I said, now you know where to use them and where not to use them. All right, y'all, so the next step is gonna be, I'm gonna start building this thing. Before I install any of these individual parts, my first step is I will put in the heater wiring. And then after the heater wiring, I will start building the high voltage rails. And then I can start installing parts, all right? Well, here we go, heaters first. <laughs> 